Nice to see you again. My name is Mrs Coxon and I'm going to take you through today's maths lesson. I hear you've been doing really well with your fractions work. So to begin with, let's just recap our learning from last time. I know you've been really busy last lesson looking at examples like this. So let's compare these two fractions. Now, if we have a whole and we've divided it into five equal parts and we have all of them, this is the same as one. And if we have another whole and we've divided it into nine equal parts and we have all of them, then this is also equivalent to one. Can you remember what this also tells us about the relationship between five fifths and nine ninths? That's right, we can say that five fifths is equivalent to nine ninths. And when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it has the same position on the number line as one. So these two fractions are equivalent and they both share the same place on the number line as one. OK, let's see how you got on with the practice questions from last time. So here we've got some questions with some missing numerators and missing denominators. So let's have a look at the first one. One is equal to how many fifths? How many fifths is equivalent to one? Five fifths. Well done if you got that one right. And the next one, 10 and we've got a missing denominator is equivalent to one. 10 what is equivalent to one? 10 tenths is equivalent to one. And the next one, seven sevenths is equal to how many eighths? How many eighths is equivalent to seven sevenths? Eight eighths, well done. And the last one, seven sevenths is equivalent to six sixths. So give yourself a pat on the back if you got all of those well uh, right. Well done for that. And we also gave you a little bit of a challenge to do. Now I'm thinking about this and I can think there'll be so many different answers you can have. Uh, you were asked to complete these questions. I bet you thought of loads of ways you could think to complete these expressions. So I'm going to have a go myself and I could say four quarters is equal to five fifths. I could say that four quarters is equal to 18 eighteenths. I could say four quarters is equal to 91 90 firsts. I could say that four quarters is equal to 47 40 sevenths. So if you so long as you've got the, the numerator and the denominator are the same, then you have got all of those right. So well done for that. Super. OK, we're going to move on with our learning now. I've got some other fractions for us to compare, but this time they might not be equal. So here's the first pair. Can you think what sign we could put in the circle to compare these fractions to make this statement correct? It's going to be one of these here. Can you choose which one would need to go into the circle? That's right. One is equivalent to three thirds. Now, one and three thirds share the same place on the number line. This is my number line showing one, and it also shows three thirds. What about this pair of numbers? Which sign is needed here? That's right, 10 tenths is equivalent to one. And here they are on the number line. There's our 10 tenths, which is equivalent to one. Remember, if the the numerator and the denominator are the same, they share the same position on the number line as one. And now let's think about this pair of numbers. Which sign is needed here? I want you to think about your reasoning this time. So let's first think about the correct answer. Four fifths is less than one. Did you get that right? So what's your reasoning and how can you convince me? So I wanted you to pause your video and think about what you could write or draw. You could think about where if each of those numbers is on the number line, or perhaps you could use a, a reasoning sentence, or perhaps you could draw a diagram. So pause your video now, and we'll see what you've come up with. Well, I have three friends who shared their reasoning with me about this question, 
and this is what they did. So first of all, this is Will, and Will decided to draw a diagram to show how four fifths is less than a whole. He's used a lovely bar model to compare those two numbers. And next we have Ella, this is Ella, and she has decided to imagine where four fifths and one are, are in a number line. And she uses this to prove that four fifths is less than one. And finally, this is Hannah, and she uses a reasoning sentence. And she says that one whole is made up of five fifths and four fifths is less than five fifths. And that means that four fifths is less than than one. I wonder if you used any of those methods to show your reasoning. A little bit different this time. Um, what about this one? I wonder if you could use your reasoning again to decide on the missing symbol. Have you, have you had a think? Okay. Yeah, so we've got one eighth and one eighth and one eighth is less than one. And that's because one is made up of eight one eighths and three one eighths is less than this. So three one eighths is less than one. Well done if you got that. OK, this time I have a fraction story for you. Here's a word problem. And I want you to, again to think about your reasoning to decide if there is any cake left. Here's the story. So here's Will and Will eats one fifth of the cake. Hannah and Ahmed eat one fifth of the cake each. Ella eats one fifth of the cake. And Daisy also has one fifth. I want you to think about, is there any cake left? You might want to pause your video and think about how you can show that, show your reasoning with that one. OK, so here's my answer to that one. I looked at one fifth and one fifth and one fifth and one fifth and one fifth which makes one. So there are five fifths, which is equivalent to one. So the whole of the cake has been eaten and there is no cake left. Did you show that? Well done. OK, we've got a different style of question now. Let's try these. For each pair, I want you to think carefully if each statement is true or false and think carefully about what reasoning you will use for your answer. So you need to pause your video whilst you work through each and remember to justify your answer each time. We'll see how you got on in a moment. OK, let's have a look at the first one. We've got three thirds is less than six six. Do we agree with that? No, we don't agree with that. What sign should be between those two, do we think? three thirds and six six. Well, we know when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it's equivalent to one. Both of those fractions are equivalent to one and they're equal to each other as well. OK, let's have a look at the next one. Eight eighths is less than two halves. Do we agree? No, we don't agree, do we? No, because eight eighths again is equivalent to one and two halves is equivalent to one and eight eighths is equivalent to two halves. OK, let's have a look at the third one. One is less than five sixths. How many sixths would there be in one? Hmm. I think six sixths would be equivalent to one. Did you get that too? Well done. So that one's correct because one is bigger, it's larger, it's greater than five six because one would be six sixths. And the last one, we've got a quarter, add a quarter, add a quarter, add a quarter is is greater than one. Do we agree? No, that's not, we're not correct either. We should have a, an equal sign. We've got all four quarters and all four quarters would be equivalent to one. So how do we do with that? I bet you did great, super. 
Okay, fantastic work today. I think you are ready for a challenge. So here it is. We have some fraction statements with missing digits, with missing numerators or missing denominators. Can you use the numerals 4, 10 and 9 to make these statements correct? You can only use each digit once and I want you to pause your video whilst you have a go and we'll see how you got on in a moment. OK, let's see how we did. Um, OK, let's have a look at the first one here. We've got eight and we've got a missing denominator. So eight something is less than one. Let's have a look at the first digit. Eight quarters is less than one. Would that work? No, that wouldn't work. So it's not going to be four there. Let's have a look at the next digit. We've got eight tenths is less than one. Yeah, that would work. So it could be ten. Let's just check to see if nine would work as well. Eight ninths is less than one. Hmm, that works as well. So we don't know which one's going to go in there yet, do we? So we're going to have to leave that one. Let's move on to, let's do the middle one. Okay, so we've got one is greater than so many sixths. How many sixths? Hmm, one is greater than four sixths. Would that work? Yeah, that would work. Four six would work in there. What about one is greater than ten sixths? No, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't wouldn't make that correct. And one is greater than nine six. No, that wouldn't work either. So we know that four has to go in there. Great. So let's have a look at the the last one here. One is greater than nine. Hmm, well, it's not going to be four because we've already used that one. One is greater than nine tenths would that work mm, yeah one is greater than nine tenths that would work what about the nine one is greater than nine ninths no that wouldn't work because one is equivalent to nine ninths so we know that ten has to go there so our number nine numeral would have to go over here let's just check it eight ninths is less than one that fits as well well done super well, it's almost time for us to finish. You've been amazing today and I'd like to give you one last task to complete before we come back together next lesson. So here we have Yonis and this is his sister Ikran. Yonis has one quarter of an orange and his sister Ikran has three quarters of an orange. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think carefully about showing and convincing me in as many ways as possible that Ikran has more orange than Yonis. And then we'll look to see how you got on in our next lesson. So be ready to convince me. So that's the end of our lesson today um, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.